If you like to get lots of photos on your scrapbook layouts, then you are going to love today's video because I am going to get all of these photos onto one double page layout. Plus it's lots of bright colors, which can be hard to work with. So we're gonna have lots of fun with these kayaking pictures. And I was really excited when Close to My Heart came out with these two stamp sets. And I have, I'm really glad that I waited to scrapbook these photos, which are from 2017. It's like, I knew I was waiting for the perfect stamp set. This set is called Let's Kayak and it's got all kinds of kayaking themed um, stamps and then there's even a stand-up paddleboard. This one is a canoe but lots of river and lake kind of stamps on there. So I'm going to be using this and then the other set, let's see if I can get them separated here. The other set is this one here. Now this one does not have coordinating dies. This one has a few coordinating dies, the ones that have the um, shading in blue. But I was really excited about this one too. I definitely want to use this as my title. I love the aviator glasses right here. So I'm going to just fussy cut those out for today's layout. Now, when I was trying to figure out how to lay these out, I have a lot of four by six uh, landscape orientation photos, and I wanted to keep them four by six because they're kind of far away and I wanted to keep the distance so you could be able to see the water and the surroundings, um, but make sure that we're not too small. A lot of times I do three by four sizes, and like in this one I did, but I wanted a lot of these to be bigger. So at first I was thinking I could do some sort of arrangement like this, and then when you do something like this, you don't need as much paper because you're just gonna have like a strip here and then strips here and then maybe have these like this. I'm trying to do it kind of in order. So this is my son when he was just one playing on the dock and my daughter with her binoculars. My dad and I before we went getting ready to go. See, this would have to be like this. But for some reason, I just wasn't liking this vertical orientation and I was think, trying to think like, what else can I do? So then I turned to the Make It From Your Heart Volume 3. This is a pattern book that Close To My Heart has put out. And spoiler alert, there's another Make It From Your Heart book coming out on September 1st. So super excited about that. Um, but this one is what I turned to and I thought it would be perfect. So the nice thing about these books, and I've shown them before, but they have like a blueprint of the layout. They have cutting guides so you know exactly what size to cut all of your pieces. And then there's two artwork examples here. But the nice thing is that you've got your base done. You've got, you know, where your photos and paper is going to go. And then you can embellish as little or as much as you want. So this is Make It From Your Heart Volume 3. I will link this down in the description box below along with everything else that I'll be using today. So when I was referring to that, this totally changed. So we've got a couple spots up here. And then let's see, I want this to be first. I wanted to kind of tell the story, like I said, before we went and then when we were in the water. And so I think I'll have these like that. And then this one is part of the story here. I love this one where my daughter and I are looking at each other. So this is actually three separate kayaking trips, but it's over the same summer. So I just thought I would group them all together rather than have three different layouts. And this is when we're just about to leave. We just left the dock and then this is out in the bay. So my parents have a house in Oregon and they uh, back up to this inlet with a dock and then it opens up to the bay. So you have to time it right with the tide and the wind, but when we do get to go, it is super fun. It's one of my favorite things to do. And my daughter, when, let's see, she would have been four at the time, she came with us and then she fell asleep on me. <laughs> so I had a towel kind of draped over her after this picture was taken so she didn't get sunburned, but she just kind of fell asleep. We were out there for a couple of hours, but. She 
she loved it. It's just so calming being on the water. How many of you guys love just being on the water? I don't care what I'm on. I just love being on the water and surrounded by nature. So I figured um, this would be a flip flap and then I'll have my journaling in here too. So I was trying to decide if I want to cover this picture of her sleeping because it's so cute, but it's kind of far away. You can't really tell what it is. So I thought, well, when you lift up the flip flap and read the journaling, then you can read what happened and you'll see it right there. So that's going to be a flip flap. And then this one will just tuck right here. So let's refer back to our sketch. So we've got the three photos going across here. And then this is supposed to be a journaling box, but I'm just doing another photo. Although it is kind of going to be a journaling box too. And that flip flap that lifts up. And then here they have two three by four photos and I've got a four by six instead. And then I added one more three by four landscape orientation. And then over here, we've got a single three by four photo and then just like a piece of decorative paper or pocket card or something there. So I'm going to fill that with another photo because I have another photo. And then my, my uh, title, I'll still do this little banner thing. My title can still go here. I'm thinking that this summer stamp, when I cut it out, can go here and maybe even overlap right here. So that should fit just perfectly. So let's talk paper. I pulled these papers to start, not sure what I'll go with. I often like to start with a white background because it's just kind of a blank canvas, especially since I have so much color here. I thought I would try that first and then we can add some patterns to it or maybe we don't even like the white pattern. So we'll just try that out first. This is from the Mixin pack and I thought it kind of resembled water. It's kind of like wavy lines. So I thought that might be fun. So there's a piece of paper that goes back behind here. It'll be kind of like this. I can already tell right now, I don't like the pattern right under these. It's just too much for me. But what if I use that as my background and then this can be the one that goes here. So we're talking about this piece that goes like this. So we can do that. That almost looks a little too plain to me. We can dress it up, we'll add a little bit, but I think we can add a little bit more even with all of these colors. So this is the wood grain from the um, Cape Cod collection and this is what that looks like but I'm just using this one that looks kind of like driftwood so that could potentially work and I, it's fine I don't love it I could add a white mat around each of the photos the sketch doesn't call for a mat, but a lot of times I'll do that anyway. I like having white mats around my photos, but let me just see what else I can find. This is a wood grain that is in the um, Four Seasons Summer Collection. I love that collection. And I, I thought this almost looked like a deck because we're on the deck right here. And even though it's not wood, it's metal. We can just pretend, right? <laughs> so I do like that it conflicts with the siding on the house a little bit it's a little bit yellowy um, let me see what else I have we have a lot of yellow in the paddles and I think I'm going to add some bright yellow in the coloring of my embellishments as well so I found this in an old mix-in pack and I like the blue and yellow, but I spotted this Live in the Best Summer Life on this summer collection. And I thought that I would stamp that summer here and then live in the best, have it kind of sticking out from here. And the yellow on yellow doesn't really work. So unless I figure something else out, like I do that banner in, a, in white, and have this on top of the banner. That could maybe look good. But let me try one more thing. 
I found this white wood grain in my stash and I only have one sheet. So if I use this, I'm going to have to be super careful because I need to span it on this side and this side. And according to the sketch, you've got an eight and a half by 10 piece and a six and a quarter by eight and a half. So I would need more than 112 by 12, but I think if I strategically cut it, since it's hiding behind here, I can cut this piece at what, like six inches or so, and then this at six inches, and then just have a little strip going across the bottom here. So I think I can make that work. So I'm gonna do a little playing off camera, and then we'll come back and see what I decided on. Okay, so here is what I decided on. These bottom strips are three quarters of an inch tall. And then those top strips are about four and a half inches tall. And that is all we needed because I only had one sheet of this yellow too. But even if I didn't, why would you waste paper when you don't need to, right? <laughs> so we'll put all of our photos in place here. And spoiler alert, I ended up not liking my color choices in the end. As I'm working here, it's like midnight, <laughs> which is not uncommon for me working on a layout. I am a night owl, but I think maybe my perception was off <laughs> because looking back now, like I was talking about, you know, making your layout not too busy with such bright colors, but here it's really busy, but I am going to correct that in the end. So stay tuned to see what I did. I colored all of my stamped images off camera with these new Colorista colored pencils that Close to My Heart is coming out with in September. And I was um, not sure what I would think about those colored pencils because I really like uh, the Prisma color pencils. But they blend lovely. They are very vibrant and um, I did really like them. So I colored the summer with them and then I took a black Tombow marker to go around the edge. I fussy cut each of those letters out. And by going around the edge with the black pen, it helps to just give it a finished look and you don't see that white edge. So if it's cut imperfectly, you really can't tell. I used that white wood green paper for this little banner flag and I'm going to add one to the other side as well and that helps my title to stand out and then it gives something for that white um, live in the best banner that I strategically cut to sit on so it's right not right on top of the yellow. And then there were these little zip strip pieces, like half inch pieces called for in the uh, sketch. So I used one of the zip strips from the Cape Cod collection with some anchors on it and thought that was uh, fitting for this. Here are the rest of those stamped images that I cut out. So that kayak one I just put down is a little bit oval shaped, but I just used a circle die to cut it out and it looks just fine. And then I did three life jackets and I colored them to look like the life jackets that we're all wearing. So they're all a little bit different to match each of the life jackets. I put the paddles down on the bottom because there was a little bit of extra space in that photo. And now I have my visual triangle formed with the three little embellishment clusters. I kept these clusters fairly simple, at least more simple than I often do. Um, and I, because they're just very vibrant colors and I really wanted each of those fun embellishments, those stamped images to stand out and I'm really liking it. On that um, summer sticker sheet, there were a few different colors of banners and other little pieces that I can fit around the page as well. That orange banner I put by the title is helping to give a little bit more separation to that live in the best um, banner so it's not as close to the yellow and I'm liking how that's looking. Seeing what else I can add here, I wanna add a little bit of red because we do have a little red in our photos and I thought that this might work, but I need a couple other points of red too to have a little bit of red in each of the embellishment clusters. And by having the same color um, or colors in each cluster, it helps in drawing your eye around the page. I'm taking the stick off of each of these stickers with my anti-static pouch. And while I play with the arrangement, I just want to remind you to be sure to like this video if you are learning something or enjoying it. That really helps my channel and um, helps other people to see my videos here on YouTube. 
And if you haven't subscribed already, I would love to have you as a subscriber. I post two scrapbooking videos a week in hopes to inspire you for your own scrapbooking. Now I'm adding a few little enamel dots in sapphire to help bring that sapphire color from the background into the center of the page. Now I'm gonna make my own journaling card. I've got a pocket card from the very old Sweet Safari collection, and I have layered a journal box on top of it, and then I'm just gonna add a few little stickers from the sticker sheet just to jazz it up a little bit. And now I've got my own journaling card that's gonna go in the flip flap. Now I'm gonna show you how to attach this flip flap. These are one of my favorite scrapbooking tools. The four by six is my most used as well as the three by four. I will link these down below. I've already got my right page in a page protector and then I'm just going to peel the backing off and stick it right over my photo on top of the page protector. Super, super easy. I'm gonna burnish that that in and the stick I have not had any problem with these coming off if you live in a more humid climate you might have a little trouble but I have not had any trouble and then I'm just going to burnish that make sure it's the crease is folded nicely and then we've got our little journaling spot and other photos showing there okay this is now three days later and the next day after I finished this layout I came back to my desk and I was like I do not like this. There's too much busyness with this paper. This is not my style. I don't like it. And part of me was like, well, you know what? It's done. Just leave it. But the other side of me, who is a perfectionist, just couldn't let it go. So I had a couple of thoughts. Actually, I mentioned this to the creative design team girls. I was like, this, I'm not liking this. What do you guys think? And Chelsea had a really great idea to maybe add some gesso to tone this down or some vellum. And I did like the gesso idea. I have some white gesso here. And I was playing with it just on some scraps of sapphire. And I thought, if if I were to mask this off, I could mask off my paper with this masking tape so I don't get anything on there, and then water down the gesso and use a little paintbrush and dab it on and it would have made that lighter. But I waited these three days to do that because I was scared that I was just gonna totally ruin it. I didn't wanna totally ruin it. I would rather just leave it like this than ruin it. So my next idea was, well, what if I just cut some strips from the top and bottom so I don't have as much of that pattern showing. So I cut two one inch white strips like this and that totally tones it down. Now I could just put the white strips on like this, but I feel like this should be the base page and I like it to be behind everything. I don't want it taller. It's got, you know, a little bit of dimension from cards that the cardstock has. So I didn't want the dimension on top. I want this behind. So what I'm actually gonna do is cut an inch from the top and the bottom, and then I'm just going to stick a piece of white behind there and then maybe add a little bit of um, splatters or something like that. Now that is totally my style and the splatters kind of, I thought that might resemble water too. So I'm gonna do that to both sides. So I just put my little scraps of one inch white on both sides and down here, I'm gonna have to work around some of my embellishments. So my embellishments will just be, luckily I did this with tape runner and not liquid adhesive. So I can just peel that up and this is on 3D foam tape, and so there's enough room under there for this to just kinda wiggle. So I think I'll be able to get my paper trimmer um, to here and then trim with scissors around it, move this little dot up and put it on top when I'm done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll see the final result. I wanted to show you this bottom piece because I couldn't cut it all the way across. I cut where I could, and then I'm gonna take my micro tip scissors, which are really small and can get into small places, and then just very carefully cut the rest of it, making sure that I'm not cutting any of those embellishments. Now, hindsight, looking back at this, I think I would have liked that, that striped background if I had used the white in place of the yellow. I think the yellow was just too bright 
to be right behind the photos. So if the yellow were white, and then instead of that anchor paper, I could have used the yellow there, and I think that that would have looked better. I'm not going to redo the whole thing. I'm not that crazy, <laughs> but looking back, hindsight is 2020, right? So that's what I would do to help these photos pop even more. But I'm happy with where I'm at, and at least it's better than it was, and I've got these memories documented, and that's what it's about, right? Making sure we've got the memories documented. It is in my scrapbook and I had fun in the process. You know, scrapbooking, yeah, it's about the documenting, but it's also about having fun in the process. And I really did have a great time making this layout. All right, so you saw me do some testing with the background elements stamp. I'm using this splatter so that I have some controlled splatter. I don't want to mess up anything more on this layout, so I'm making sure that this is controlled. I tried out Lemonade and Capri, and I thought they were both a little bit too dark for what I wanted, so I'm going with second generation Capri. So I'm stamping it off on that scrap paper, and then without re-inking, going onto my background, and that gives me a lighter shade of the color. And I'm going to do that in each of the three embellishment areas. Um, just to kind of enhance those, add a little bit of interest to that white space without adding too much because of course we were trying to tone that down in the first place. But I think it just adds a little bit of extra something and um, I like the way that the splatters look. So let's take a close up look at everything. I am loving this so much more now um, and I hope that you do too. If you would like to see still shots of this layout, check out my Instagram and Facebook pages. I've got the still shots over there and all of the links are down below as well as links to all the supplies I used. For another layout using flip flaps, check out the one that's on screen now. I think you're gonna love that and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye.